reason these are extra important in the Southern Ocean is that it's the cloudiest region in the planet. And our climate models currently drastically overestimate the amount of solar radiation that reaches the surface. And we're trying to figure out why. Clouds actually make up a, a large majority of our planet, and it really does help regulate how much solar radiation reaches the surface. So clouds are constantly doing this job of either insulating us or helping reflect that radiation back to space. So a lot of our research is gonna be going back into those climate models and saying, uh, if we see more liquid water, ice in these clouds, how much sunlight is being reflected off of those clouds? and how can we better inform the climate models to uh, adjust to those clouds over the Southern Ocean. Phytoplankton are very interesting because they have a couple of different pathways that they can become droplets and clouds. One is that they have something called dimethyl sulfide that they give off. It's a gas and it can actually become an aerosol through secondary processes and help form the water droplets and clouds. And then another pathway is when the blooms die, some of their body parts can get locked into the atmosphere and actually serve as ice nucleating particles because they provide a really nice kind of squiggly surface for water to condense and freeze on. And then they become ice and clouds and that changes the reflectivity of the cloud and how much sunlight reaches the surface. I personally am using filter samples. So I have these towers on deck nine that run continuously. So they each have different filters in them. One is to sample for ice nucleating particles and the other is to sample for the DNA of the ice nucleating particles. Uh, and I will take those filter samples back to Colorado State and run that on our instruments in the lab. As it's going up, it sends us information on temperature, relative humidity, wind speed, wind direction, pressure. So we can get a really nice look at what's happening above us in the atmosphere and in those clouds. It's a critical time in human history to be here. A lot of these areas are vastly understudied, specifically the Denman Glacier region. Um, and a lot of these areas are thawing at a drastic rate. We're, at, we're seeing one of the lowest sea ice concentrations in the last couple of years that we've ever seen. Uh, so this means a lot for changing ecosystems in Antarctica, and especially the production of more phytoplankton, more algae blooms, which can then contribute to these gases in the atmosphere and these cloud seeding processes. And so it's very important to understand the dynamics of what's happening uh, at the microphysical level so that we can see what's happening on a climate scale.